Lindy Blanchard, Alabama Tough. Lindy Blanchard will create jobs, restore election security, and block vaccine and mask mandates. Driven by faith, conservative outsider Lindy Blanchard for governor. The views expressed in the following program do not necessarily represent the views of the staff and management of WVUA 23. Bringing you analysis and insight into the Crimson Tide, your Crimson cover hosts, John Copeland, Mike Parker, and Chase Goodbread, sponsored by Burnham Hahn and by Crimson Village. Welcome into Crimson Cover Television on WVUA 23. I'm Chase Goodbread of NFL.com. I'm joined by our senior recruiting analyst, Mike Parker, to my left and to my right, Big John Copeland of the 1992 Alabama national title team. we got a lot to get to here on this edition of CCTV. We're going to tell you all about the Alabama basketball program of late, a loss to Mississippi State, a win over LSU this week. We'll recap both of those games, catch you up on the early draft entries, a half a dozen Alabama football players leaving Alabama early for the NFL draft, a little transport, transfer portal news, coaching additions, a recruiting update, a lot to get to here on CCTV. We kick it off talking Alabama basketball, the Crimson Tide, knocking off LSU in their most recent games, 70 to 67, the final score. We go to the highlights. Uh, Jaden Shackelford, an outstanding game, 26 points, four steals. Uh, Javon Quinterly, 17 points in the game. They get it done. It was a little iffy down the stretch. It, Alabama it missed. Really got, yes. Alabama had a chance to really put this game away at the free throw line, and they missed four or five free throws in a row. However, Keon Ellis stepped up with a couple of late free throws at the very end of the game that kind of put it away, although LSU did have a three-pointer at the buzzer uh, that would have given mm -hmm. them an opportunity to tie the game and put it into overtime. This team might... They, uh, this is a big win at home. They snapped a three-game SEC losing streak, yeah. so that's big. However, Nate Oates still has some things to iron out, and the top of that list, as you've pointed out the last couple weeks, has to be three-point shooting it's, and it, making more of those. If you're going to shoot 30 or 35 of those a game, you've got to make more. And the percentage just keeps getting lower. Now they're down to 31%. I mean – I could shoot that left-handed in eighth grade. They were so <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's horrible. It's, you talk it, about it on a Nerf hoop, right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Look, guys, uh, this is my thing. You know, his philosophy is to shoot the three-point. But shooting the three-point is not anything you can coach. You have to be a shooter. And once you get... Uh, in a situation where you don't feel as confident shooting a three-point shot, you're not going to make many. It's not like he can go, okay, this is the drill that's going to make you a better three-point shooter. It's well, not going to happen. Well, it's well, a confidence well, thing. Well, it's a confidence well, thing. You remember last year, what Alabama was so great at was making the extra pass. There was always an extra pass. Right. Uh, and, and the For guy the would wide be, open uh, three. Exactly. This year, that has not happened, and I don't know if JV, J.D. Uh, Davison, who is really struggling, um, turned the ball over again a thousand times, only had four points. I know I'm being rough on the kid. Yeah, the kid was in high school last year. Mike. I know, I know, but I don't know. But this is a huge win, but I will say this. Look, as bad as Alabama is shooting the ball, we were in all three of those games. We lost to Missouri, 92-86, Auburn, 81-79, and Mississippi State, 78-76. So we were in every one of those ball games. The numbers on Alabama's three-point shooting in this win over LSU, they were 7 out of 34 from three-point range, so that's under 25%. That's actually barely, 20, barely more than 20%. They were 0 for 15 in the second half Never seen from three-point range. Never seen Still it. Still managed to get the W. John, here's the thing. If you're Nate Oates and you know, look, there are going to be nights when you're going to be cold from three-point range. you got to make up for it on defense. you got to make up for it with rebounding. 
that's something they weren't doing when they lost three straight coming into this game, but they did do that against LSU. Look, Nate, Nate Oates is, is a much better basketball coach than I can ever think about being. I wasn't even really that good playing basketball. But here's my thing. The nights that we're not making three-point shots. I played pickup basketball with you. You're a good, you're a good pickup player. Well, I'm, I'm gonna give you that. Thank you. All right. But, but there are going <laughs> to be man nights. Any more confidence? No. <laughs> but look, there are going to be nights that you're not making three-point shots. So you have to have a backup. You just can't go. You just can't go seven for 34 and just keep shooting three-pointers. You have to have a backup plan. You have to be able to get into a half-court offense to get the ball in the mid-range or get it down in the paint to score a basket. You can't just keep throwing up shots that you keep I, continue to miss. I, I'll, I'll tell you who can drive the basketball just about whenever he wants to is Javon Quinterly. Yes. He can get to the basket just as small as he is. I don't know how he protects those – Seven footers from getting to his shots, but he can get, he can get there whenever he feels like going. The different here's the thing, John. Too the, the Nate Oates system is three pointers and driving to the cup, and that's fine. That's the way he plays. He's winning basketball games. He's brought Alabama a lot of success early in his coaching tenure at UA. But he's he doesn't feed the post a lot, right? Like when it, when when Nate Oates says threes and baskets at the rim. He's not talking about feeding the post for those baskets at the rim. He wants the guards getting those points. I'm and and th there are some nights when you got to get those points feeding the post. No question about it, Chase, which is what I just said. And if, if I'm a big man and you want me to play defense, you want me to guard the rim, I will if you're giving me chances to score. If you're going to feed me every now and then to keep me happy, oh, I play excellent defense for you. But if you shut me out <laughs> completely – no, I'm not going to play as hard. No, I want to score too. All right, Alabama out-rebounded LSU 44-36. to That was a big key in the game, no question about it. Up next for the Crimson Tide, they're going to be home against Missouri on Saturday. That's a 5 p.m. tip-off on SEC Network. Missouri, got to win that one. Missouri, of course, has already knocked off Alabama just a couple weeks ago. Yeah. Uh, previous uh, to the LSU game, Alabama lost to Mississippi State 78-76. Here's a quick look at that game. Alabama was up 41-37 at the half. Shot just 8 of 29 from three-point range. Shackelford 1 of 9 uh, from three-point range. Played well at the free throw line, but out-rebounded by Mississippi State. The Bulldogs had 21 second-chance points. That's certainly too many if you're shooting cold on the offensive end. And uh, that game uh, set Alabama back to two and three in the SEC. Uh, the win over LSU evened Alabama up to three and three in SEC play, John. But uh, what's the backup plan? Uh, uh, Nate Oates keeps, uh, what's, what's it, the, he keeps, he keeps changing the lineup. What's the which, backup plan though? Uh, what's, what's the backup plan? If, 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 if you're shooting, if you're that cold from the three point line, better defense, better rebounding. What, what, if, if the philosophy but, but, okay, is better defense, better rebounding, but you still have to put the ball in the bucket. Uh, you're right. Yeah. You still have to. So you have to have a plan. Okay. We're not making three point shots. What else can we do to score baskets? You have to have a backup plan. They look like Alabama right now don't have a backup plan. Well, they by philosophy Is they don't they don't it, shoot the two unless it's at the rim. That's the philosophy. That's the coach's philosophy. So you roll with it. I, don't, coach, I, I, it, I mean, I don't disagree to agree with it. Like I said, this man no more basketball than I've ever played. But I understand the, I understand a little bit about this game. If I'm playing a pickup game with Chase and we don't <laughs> shot eight. Three pointers and miss all of them. Yeah. Feed the paint. Yeah. Get a little bit closer to the basket. Yeah, Cause I'm not beating anybody <laughs> in the cup. I'm feeding Just John. Just get a little bit closer to I'm, the basket. I'm tossing it into John for that for that easy deuce. <laughs> no, I'm not blowing by anybody. All right, that's gonna do it for this segment on Crimson Cover. We got a lot to come back with. Talking Alabama football roster upheaval. Plenty more to come on CCTV. Stick around. You're watching WVUA 23. 
Burnham Hawn Exterminators offers termite and pest control solutions for residential and commercial customers in the West Alabama area. Family owned and operated, now in its third generation, we stay up to date with the latest advancements in the pest control industry to protect your family and home from pests. We're an authorized operator of the Centricon baiting system. Burnham Hawn Exterminators, here when you need us. Call us today for your complete termite and pest control services. Owens. I'm the president of OJ Fence Company. I'm a second generation fence contractor. OJ Fence has had a banking relationship with Bryant Bank for over 10 years now. It's a relationship bank uh, and that's important to us. It's not just to be another number or another account. It's to have a relationship with a banker that we truly know that will be a partner in what we do. They represent everything about personal banking which is vital to a small business. Destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin. This is the gospel of Christ. We hope you'll take your Bible and join us right here at 6 a.m. each and every Sunday morning as we study God's Word together. This is the gospel of Christ. Nick Bolton here with the latest from Bell & Howell. We call them Tack Glasses. Inspired by the sunglasses worn by our heroes in uniform, Tack Glasses block blinding glares so well, invisible objects suddenly become visible. Enhance colors to give you vision as sharp as an eagle's and survive even the harshest conditions. Act now to get your Tack Glasses for just $19.99 and we'll even ship it to you free. So don't delay, order yours today. Welcome back into Crimson Cover. This segment brought to you by Burnham Hahn Exterminators and their quality local service in Tuscaloosa for the last 75 years, offering complete pest and termite services for residential or commercial needs, mosquito control, fire ant treatments, they do it all. They're also licensed operators of the Centricon Termite Colony Elimination System, a year-round service that every homeowner should have. Give Clay Hahn and his staff a call. They'll get you started with a monthly or bi-monthly, even a quarterly pest control program. The phone number over there, 553-4433, or you can visit them online at BurnhamHahn.com. All right, Alabama football on tap this segment. Mike, some early entries for the NFL draft always happens this time of year. Uh, six Alabama players moving on to the NFL draft early. Of course, some of these guys could have come back for that COVID year. Uh, Christopher Allen, for instance, he's going on to the NFL draft. He's a, he was a four-year guy anyway. I'm talking underclassmen here. Right. Uh, Evan Neal, here, here are your Alabama underclassmen declaring for the draft. Evan Neal, the outstanding left tackle. Makes sense. Christian right. Harris, the outstanding linebacker. Jamison Williams at Don't wide receiver. Jameson Slade Williams Bolden. At wide receiver, moving on. Two more wide receiver, Makes John Mechie and cornerback Jalen Armour Davis. Mechie should have stayed. Bolden should have transferred. Mechie should have stayed. Bolden, Bolden should have transferred. I look, I agree. Bolden probably should have stayed. But Drew, the young man behind the camera, communication ma major at the University of Alabama, had a good, I good idea. I don't know what he Listen, said. Listen, if, if Slade Bolton is entering into the draft, right. Not an NFL football player right now. No. But he's real good friends with Mac Jones. 
Oh, God. And if he falls, oh, listen, it's not God. like he's going first round. He, it's not like he's going second round. It makes sense for him to go with him. Mac, Mac have had a conversation say, look, enter the draft. We'll get you late, and we'll do our thing that we've, we've done for the last year. That's a stretch. Makes he, sense. Why, why else would he go to the NFL? Because we got a bunch of young, talented wide then receivers. Uh, 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 are you serious? That, that's, that's, what, that's, Mike, what, that's what I'm saying. It, it, I, think, I think he should transfer. That's, I, I think you're out of your mind. I I mean, why why I'll out? tell you exactly why. why. Look, okay, John Mechie's gone early. Jamison Williams is gone early. Mm-hmm. Jerome Baker's transferring out, okay? It's fine. Okay, so if you're Slade Bolden, if you decide to come back to Alabama instead of going to the NFL – it's wide open for you to catch a lot more balls next year than you caught in 2021. I mean, I, are you I, really going to sit I, there that, and te- – that, that, that's, that's fair to say that he would catch more balls, but that doesn't mean that his draft stock is going to go through the roof. No, I agree with that. I agree with that. Matt, I, Drew, Matt Jones. Matt Jones called Slate Say, said, look, Slate, go on the inner because you're not going to be a high first rounder next year either. Go to Nenner. You're probably going to pick you up in the sixth round, fifth, sixth round, and come to New England, and we're going to take the thing to the next level. All right. Think about uh, Elderman. Think about who? Oh, yeah. Well, okay. (laughs) Think Elderman. All right. There's not many. There's not many of those. I understand. Okay. I I understand. Uh, What about, look, here's here's where I'm disagreeing with you, Mike. I mean, you're talking like Alabama's. Just gonna blow up at wide receiver no, next not. year. Well, no, that's what you're saying. They no, got a ton I'm of saying young they talent. Have a talent. They, they, they do have a talent. Okay. Well, you know what? It didn't show up late in the game against Georgia, did well, it? Well, that's unfair. That's though. because that's, that's unfair. That's, that's, that's unfair. because we didn't that's play. Him. That's unfair. Bill O'Brien didn't put him on the field all it, year. Yeah, had, that's unfair. He had three people that he played all year long. All right. Yeah, all that's, right. that's unfair. I, look, in my, in my opinion. Alabama needs a big name out of the transfer portal or a big freshman, incoming freshman to step up and be a one. Who's going to be the number one go-to wide receiver on this team next year, in your opinion, Mike? A transfer. Okay, so you can't even name somebody who's going to step up and be the horse. No. Slade Bolden goes to Nick Saban office and say, hey, coach, I'm going to go to the NFL. Under normal circumstances, Nick would have told him, boy, have you lost your mind. You're not an NFL player. But this kid went into the NFL trail. Mac Joe, Slade coming to see you, and I hope y'all rip it up. <laughs> rip it up. He can get open short, Thank and he's you, got Drew. a good pair of hands. There's hey, no look, doubt that, about that it. That is not me. That's all Drew behind the camera. All right, a little bit more discussion on top returning players. Safety Jordan Battle decides he's going to be coming back for another year at Alabama. Henry Toa Toa. At middle linebacker, going to be back for another season. DeMarco Hellams, uh, the Crimson Tide safety, will be back. So that battle, Hellams, safety tandem, back again for the Crimson Tide. DJ Dale coming back at defensive tackle. Those four guys are going to make up a bit, along with Will Anderson, of course. But those four guys are going to bring a lot of experience next year. Henry Tuatoa and Jordan Battle. Easily could have gone pro. In fact, I think I don't ba- think Tua Tua. I, I, I don't think Tua Tua could have went pro. Oh, he would have got drafted. Somebody would have drafted late, him. Real late, really. Um, but uh, you know, as far as Jordan Battle's concerned, I, I would. It would. It would not surprise me if he had entered the draft and gone late first round. No. Nah. Yeah. No. Nah. Yeah, John. I don't know you the draft guy. What you think? Second Talking half of the season, man. Tua Tua battle. Battle. I think he's a mid-round pick. I think he'd been a third, fourth round type guy no. if, if he'd have gone into the draft. I'm gonna disagree with Dot Com here. What, what were, <laughs> where, where, where would you do it? Okay. Well, you tell you tell me, okay. Mr. GM. Right. Where, where, where would you have taken him? I I, I I would highly think about taking him late first. Yeah. I I, I, I don't know. I don't. don't okay. Me. I don't. I don't know. Okay. All right. Well, he's coming back. Yeah. Why would he? Come back if he was a first-round player. I don't know. Maybe he's not a first-round player. Is that possible? I, that's possible. <laughs> out, out of all the guys that I thought should have came back, that might have a chance to go was Toa Toa. I thought he really needed to come back. He did. It's, it's, Toa Toa is back. Yeah, I know. I know. Okay. Yeah, all right. A little bit more news. Also transferring out of the Alabama program, linebacker Jalen Moody. 
linebacker Shane Lee, and wide receiver Javon Baker. And also a little bit of news on transfer destinations. Looks like former backup quarterback Paul Tyson is on his way to Arizona State. Linebacker Drew Sanders is going to transfer to Arkansas. And Jaleel Billingsley, apparently, not official yet, I don't believe, but apparently he's probably headed to the University of Texas to care. play for Steve Sarkeesian. Get out of here. So, I don't care. No, where. I don't say that, Mike, man. Nope. And, and, and the climate we live in right Mike's now. Mike's a hater. <clears throat> Mike's yeah. a straight-up no, hater. I, I'm a hater on, on Billingsley. I do not no, like look, him. Look, look, look. Not, not as a person. I'm talking about football players. I understand that. But, but he was in the doghouse so long, we don't know what that was about. No. But, you know, I was against, me and you both was against transferring. It was like you shouldn't do it. Mm. But in the climate of today's college football, Man, go where you can play. Go where you can get an opportunity to provide for your family. I'm all for that. All right, really quickly before we get out of here for this segment, got a lot more to come on the other side of the break, but some coaching additions. Uh, Nick Saban reportedly hiring Coleman Huntsler to coach outside linebackers and special teams. Also hired reportedly Traveris Robinson to coach the cornerbacks. It's unclear what's going to happen uh, with a couple of current Alabama staffers. Uh, this past year, Drew Svoboda and Sal Sunsery coached special teams and outside linebackers, respectively. Robinson's from the Miami area, native to Miami. Nick Saban likes to have a Miami native on that coaching staff. He's Boy. had him before. Maybe Traveris Robinson will help Alabama recruiting-wise in South Florida. It's such a huge area for recruiting so many excellent Alabama players under Nick Saban from that South Florida area. Robinson actually played at Auburn, Mike, uh, and headed, <laughs> headed for the UA coaching staff. We'll get your thoughts on I, that I can forgive it. another day. When we come back, <laughs> a little bit of recruiting news. We got the Crimson Cover ticker and plenty more. You're watching CCTV on WVUA 23. It's good to know that in this impersonal world, there's still a local home-owned drugstore that can take full care of you and your family. The good folks at North Pork Pharmacy. Owner and pharmacist Rob Colburn will personally see that all of your prescriptions are quickly and accurately filled and your questions answered. And be sure to check out their gift gallery for the finest in gift selections featuring Alabama merchandise, photo frames, children's clothing, beachwear, jewelry, and more. Remember, when you have pharmaceutical needs, see the man who will take the time to get to know you. Rob Colburn at North Pork Pharmacy, located next to CC's Pizza, Highway 82 in North Port. Burnham Hawn Exterminators offers termite and pest control solutions for residential and commercial customers in the West Alabama area. Family owned and operated, now in its third generation, we stay up to date with the latest advancements in the pest control industry to protect your family and home from pests. We're an authorized operator of the Centricon baiting system. Burnham Hawn Exterminators, here when you need us. Call us today for your complete termite and pest control services. TuscaloosaToyota.com. We want to hear your good news stories and be a bright spot. Join WVUA 23 on Thursdays and help us shine a light on what's good in our community. 20 David, 20 David, 50 David in need of assistance. Go! Let's kick ass. SWAT isn't about kicking ass, it's about saving lives, which sometimes requires kicking a little ass. Street, street, street! Why'd we let him drive? Take care of business, fellas. Ha, ha. Never be in a hurry to die.
Welcome back to the final segment of Crimson Cover Television. This segment brought to you, as always, by Crimson Village, the most active and fun-loving aging adult community in Tuscaloosa. Residents there enjoying the finest in dining and lifestyle experience with extensive amenities, a convenient location right off of Veterans Memorial Parkway. Crimson Village offering three levels of care, including the Tide Memory Care Program, they take the highest of precautions when it comes to COVID-19 with their residents. So give Tim Eves a call. He's the transition specialist over there. The phone number is 632-6699 or visit crimsonvillage.com online. And remember, Crimson Village owns fun. All right, fellas, we are tight on time here in this final segment. So we're going to fly through a couple topics. We're going to start with recruiting and Arch Manning, the... Uh, uh, yep. Of the Archie, he's the, Eli, he, Peyton Manning family. He's and, Cooper's son. And, yeah, he's Cooper's son. He's Cooper Manning's son, a five-star recruit. He is be, uh, set to be visited by Nick Saban and Pete Golding uh, today. As a matter of fact, that meeting happened just a couple hours ago, if I'm not mistaken. He, uh, that's a big visit. He, it is a big visit. And a lot of people think that Alabama just has 0% shot. But then... You know, to be honest, I, I think it's changed. I think I think the the momentum is, is swinging in Alabama's favor. Um, we do have three really good quarterbacks um, on our roster, but Bryce Young is going to go pro next season. Let's just you know he's gone, so uh, it's going to be interesting to see. But Ole, Ole Miss is not going to give up. Ole Miss is not going to give up. Why would you? No, but you're not going to. Be big for Lane Kiffin, oh, for yeah. sure. Bring Arch Manning in there. All right, moving on, the Crimson Cover ticker now. A little bit of news for you around the National Football League. Eagles quarterback Jalen Hurts throws for 258 yards, but a couple of interceptions and a playoff loss to the Tampa Bay Bucks. Bad interceptions, too. Yes, they <clears throat> were. Cowboys wide receiver Amari Cooper, six catches, six, 64 yards, and a touchdown in a loss to the 49ers. Big disappointment for the Cowboys to drop that one. And finally, Derrick Henry expected to return for the Tennessee Titans from a foot injury against the Cincinnati Bengals this weekend in the divisional playoff round. John, Derrick Henry has been out for about nine, ten weeks now, if I'm not mistaken. He's got a steel plate in his injured foot still, uh, but he's been practicing this, practicing this week. The word is he's ready to go. And it's none too soon for the Titans. Hey, look, I was the worst bingo critic on the planet. Yep. But now that we're winning, I'm on the bandwagon. <laughs> hey, Derek, I'm sorry for you, man. But you should just sit out, sit out the rest of this season because it's not going to do you any good. Bingles, bingles by 10, right, Drew? Bingo by 10. Joe Burrow is having a big year for those Bengals. Big time quarter. Big time for They're him. just the beginning, though. And that's what he said. He's three confident. Years, three years, we'll win the Super Bowl. Woo! <laughs> Look at Mike. <laughs> All right, we got to get out of here really quickly before we sign off. CFP ex expansion talks have stalled. It looks like yes. the current four-team format of the college football playoff is probably going to be in place through the end of the current contract, which runs through 2026. Maybe in 2027, we ex see it expanded to 12 teams. We'll see. But we got to go now for John Copeland. And Mike Parker, I'm Chase Goodbread. We'll see you next week on Crimson Cover. The Holiday Inn Express Hotel and Suites in Tuscaloosa invites you to come and experience our award-winning hotel and exceptional hospitality. We are located just minutes from the Alabama campus and area shopping. If it's business, shopping, groups, or family that bring you to town, call us to book your stay. Once you have stayed with us, you'll understand. We welcome you as our guests and you depart as our friends. The Holiday Inn Express. Welcome to Baseball Country, a ministry in West Alabama that reaches far outside the diamond. We create opportunities for people of all ages and backgrounds to encounter Jesus. From baseball and softball training for high school to the big leagues, to men's and women's team sports camps, men's and women's ministry, youth mentored hunts, service projects, custom retreats, and so much more. If you want to get in the game, email Sam at BaseballCountry.com and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. 
When you want to follow Crimson Tide Sports, there's only one show that takes you behind the scenes. The award-winning Tider Insider TV. Join Rodney Orr and Gary Harris every Tuesday night at 6.30 for the latest on all things Crimson.